Have you ever wondered why some people seem to glide through life with ease while others face endless challenges? Is it mere chance? Or could there be a powerful force at work, guiding our destinies? What if I told you that there's a universal law, a dark, immutable law, that governs the lives of those who have awakened to higher truths? A law that, if broken, can have devastating consequences not just for them, but for the entire cosmos? In today's video, we are going to explore the sacred responsibility of the awakened, and the one law, they must never, under any circumstance, violate. Stay with me as we dive deep into the spiritual realm, and uncover the profound implications of this ancient cosmic rule. Introduction to the concept of karma. Ladies and gentlemen, when we discuss karma, we are not merely talking about a mystical force, or a religious belief confined to the ancient temples of the East. Karma, in its essence, is the universal law of cause and effect, a principle as old as time itself, which dictates that every action, thought, and intention we project into the world reverberates back to us in some form. This law transcends cultural, religious, and geographical boundaries, finding expression in various spiritual traditions across the globe. But what does karma truly mean? How does it operate? And why should we, particularly those who consider themselves awakened or on the path to spiritual awakening, pay heed to it? To answer these questions, we must first delve into the very fabric of karma, what it is, how it functions, and why it is integral to the structure of the universe itself. Karma, derived from the Sanskrit word meaning action, or, deed, is the principle that governs the cycle of cause and effect. It is a force of balance, ensuring that everything we do, whether good or bad, is accounted for in the grand ledger of the universe. Every thought, every word, every deed creates a ripple in the fabric of existence, a ripple that eventually returns to its source. This is the essence of karma, the inevitability of consequences. It is not punitive, it is corrective, a force of cosmic justice, that ensures harmony and balance are maintained. In many spiritual traditions, karma is viewed not just as a mechanism of justice but as a tool for learning and growth. Each karmic reaction we experience is an opportunity to understand the effects of our actions, to learn from them, and to evolve spiritually. It is through this lens that we must view karma, not as a force to be feared, but as a teacher, guiding us towards a deeper understanding of ourselves and our place in the universe. However, for those who are awakened, those who have transcended the ordinary levels of consciousness and have become attuned to the spiritual truths that underpin our reality, karma takes on a much more profound significance. For the awakened, or, awake souls, as we shall call them, karma is not just a force of balance, it is a responsibility, a sacred duty that must be honored and upheld. The responsibility of awake souls. Who are these awake souls? What distinguishes them from the rest of humanity? Awake souls are those individuals who have awakened to a higher level of consciousness. They have transcended the limitations of the ego and the material world, and have come to understand the deeper, spiritual truths that govern existence. These are the souls who have dedicated themselves to a life of service, to guiding others on their spiritual journeys, and to living in accordance with the highest principles of love compassion, and truth. Awake souls are not necessarily saints, or sages, though many may be, they can be found in all walks of life, in the teacher who inspires their students, in the healer who mends not just the body but the soul, in the artist who channels divine inspiration into their work, in the leader who serves with humility and wisdom. What unites these individuals is their deep connection to the spiritual realm, and their commitment to using their gifts for the betterment of humanity. Yet, with this heightened awareness, and spiritual power comes a great responsibility. The universe, in its infinite wisdom, holds awake souls to a higher standard. Their actions carry greater weight, their thoughts and intentions have a more profound impact on the world around them, and their ability to influence the course of events is significantly amplified. As a result, the karma they generate is also more potent, and the consequences of their actions are more far-reaching. This is the crux of the dark law, that awake souls must not break, the law of non-interference with the free will of others. This law is fundamental to the operation of the universe, for it preserves the integrity of each soul's journey, and ensures that every individual has the opportunity to learn, grow, and evolve at their own pace. To violate this law is to disrupt the natural order of the cosmos, to interfere with the lessons that each soul is meant to experience, and to create a karmic imbalance, that can have catastrophic consequences. Exploring the concept of free will. Free will is a gift, a divine right bestowed upon every soul. It is the freedom to choose, to act, to create our own destiny. It is through the exercise of free will that we learn, that we grow, that we evolve. Every decision we make, every path we choose, is a reflection of our free will. It is the mechanism by which we navigate the labyrinth of life, learning from our successes and our failures, 
our joys and our sorrows. For awake souls, the concept of free will is sacrosanct. It is the foundation upon which the entire edifice of spiritual evolution is built. Without free will, there can be no true growth, no true learning, no true evolution. To interfere with the free will of another is to rob them of their divine right to learn and grow in their own way, at their own pace. It is to impose our will upon them, to force them down a path that may not be theirs to walk. Imagine, for a moment, that you are a master artist. You have spent years honing your craft, developing your skills, and creating works of profound beauty and meaning. Now, imagine that you are presented with a blank canvas, and you are told that you must create a masterpiece, but you cannot use your hands, your tools, or your brushes. Instead, you must guide another person, someone, who has never painted before, to create this masterpiece. You can advise them, you can guide them, you can inspire them, but you cannot touch the canvas. The creation of the masterpiece is entirely up to them. This is the challenge faced by awake souls. They are the master artists, but the canvas is the life of another, and the creation of the masterpiece is the responsibility of that other soul. Awake souls can guide, they can inspire, they can offer their wisdom, but they cannot interfere. They cannot impose their will upon another, for to do so would be to violate the law of free will and to disrupt the natural order of the universe. This is why the dark law that awake souls must not break is so crucial. It is a law that preserves the integrity of each soul's journey. That ensures that every individual has the opportunity to learn, grow, and evolve in their own way, at their own pace. It is a law that protects the sanctity of free will, and it is a law that must be honored and upheld by all who walk the path of awakening. The temptation of power. But why is this law so difficult to uphold? Why is it so tempting for awake souls to interfere with the free will of others? The answer lies in the nature of power. Awake souls possess great power, power that is both spiritual and energetic. They have the ability to influence the world around them in profound ways, to manifest their desires, to heal, to guide, to inspire. This power is a gift, a tool to be used for the benefit of humanity, but it is also a temptation. Power, by its very nature, is seductive. It is easy to believe that, because one possesses power, one also possesses the right to use it as one sees fit. It is easy to believe that, because one has the ability to influence the course of events, one also has the right to do so. But this is a dangerous belief, for it can lead to the violation of the law of free will. Consider the story of a wise and powerful king. This king ruled over a vast and prosperous kingdom. He was loved by his people, respected by his allies, and feared by his enemies. He was known for his wisdom, his fairness, and his compassion. But the king had a secret. He possessed a powerful magical artifact, an artifact that allowed him to see into the future and to influence the course of events. With this artifact, the king was able to prevent wars, to avert disasters, and to ensure the prosperity of his kingdom. But over time, the king began to rely more and more on the artifact. He began to use it not just to prevent disasters, but to control the lives of his subjects. He would use the artifact to ensure that his people made the right choices, that they followed the right paths. He believed that he was acting in their best interests, that he was protecting them from harm. But in doing so, he was robbing them of their free will, of their right to make their own choices, to learn from their own mistakes. Eventually, the king's actions began to have unintended consequences. The more he tried to control the lives of his subjects, the more resistant they became. His kingdom, once prosperous and harmonious, began to fall into disarray. The king, in his desire to do good, had violated the law of free will, and as a result, he had disrupted the natural order of the universe. His actions, though well-intentioned, had created a karmic imbalance that led to the downfall of his kingdom. This story illustrates the danger of power, the temptation to use it to control and manipulate, rather than to guide and inspire. For awake souls, the temptation to use their power to influence the lives of others is always present. They possess the knowledge, the wisdom, and the ability to do so. But they must resist this temptation, for to give in to it is to violate the law of free will, and to create a karmic imbalance, that can have far-reaching consequences. The importance of humility. The antidote to the temptation of power is humility. Awake souls must cultivate humility, for it is through humility that they can resist the temptation to interfere with the free will of others. Humility is the recognition that, no matter how wise, how powerful, or how enlightened one may be, one does not have the right to impose one's will upon another. It is the recognition that every soul has its own journey, its own lessons to learn, and its own path to walk. Humility is not the same as passivity. It does not mean that awake souls should stand idly by while others suffer or make harmful choices. Rather, it means that they should offer their guidance, their wisdom, 
and their support without imposing their will. They should be like the lighthouse, standing firm and shining their light, guiding others through the storms of life, without forcing them to take a particular path. Consider the story of a great spiritual teacher. This teacher had many followers, and his wisdom and compassion were renowned throughout the land. He had the ability to see into the hearts and minds of his followers, to understand their deepest fears, their greatest desires, and their most profound challenges. He could see the paths they were walking, and he knew where those paths would lead. One day, a young man came to the teacher, seeking guidance. The young man was at a crossroads in his life, uncertain of which path to take. The teacher listened to the young man's story, and he could see clearly the choices that lay before him. He knew which path would lead to happiness and fulfillment, and which path would lead to suffering and despair. But instead of telling the young man which path to take, the teacher asked him questions. He encouraged the young man to explore his own heart, to reflect on his own desires, and to consider the consequences of his choices. He guided the young man gently, helping him to see the options before him, but he never imposed his will. He allowed the young man to make his own decision, to walk his own path, and to learn from his own experiences. This story illustrates the power of humility. The teacher had the wisdom and the knowledge to direct the young man's life, but he chose not to interfere. He chose to respect the young man's free will, to honor his right to make his own choices, and to learn from them. This is the path of humility, the path that awake souls must walk if they are to honor the law of free will. The role of compassion Closely related to humility is compassion. Awake souls must cultivate compassion, for it is through compassion that they can offer their guidance and support without interfering with the free will of others. Compassion is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another, to walk in their shoes, to see the world through their eyes. It is the ability to offer love and support without judgment, without trying to control or manipulate. Compassion is not just a feeling, it is an action. It is the willingness to stand beside another, to offer a helping hand, to be a source of comfort and strength. But true compassion respects the autonomy and the free will of the other. It does not seek to control or to impose. It seeks to empower and to uplift. Consider the story of a healer. This healer was known throughout the land for her ability to cure the sick and the wounded. She had a deep connection to the spiritual realm, and she was able to channel healing energy in a way that brought relief and comfort to those in need. But the healer also understood that healing was not just about curing the body, it was about healing the soul. She knew that, for true healing to occur, the individual must be willing and ready to receive it. One day, a man came to the healer, suffering from a grave illness. He was desperate for a cure, and he begged the healer to use her powers to heal him. The healer could see that the man's illness was not just physical, it was rooted in deep emotional and spiritual wounds that he had carried for many years. She knew that she could cure his physical illness, but she also knew that, unless the man addressed the root causes of his suffering, the illness would return. Instead of simply healing the man, the healer spoke to him with compassion. She listened to his story, understood his pain, and helped him to see the connections between his physical illness and his emotional wounds. She guided him to confront his past, to forgive those who had wronged him, and to forgive himself. She offered him tools and practices to help him on his journey of healing, but she did not force him to follow any particular path. She respected his free will, knowing that true healing could only occur if he was willing to take the necessary steps. This story illustrates the power of compassion. The healer had the ability to cure the man's illness, but she chose to guide him with compassion respecting his free will and empowering him to take responsibility for his own healing. This is the path of compassion, the path that awake souls must walk if they are to honor the law of free will. The consequences of violating the law. Now that we have explored the principles of free will, humility, and compassion, let us turn our attention to the consequences of violating the law that awake souls must not break. What happens when an awake soul interferes with the free will of another? What are the karmic repercussions of such an action? And how do they manifest in the lives of the individuals involved? The consequences of violating the law of free will are profound and far-reaching. When an awake soul interferes with the free will of another, they create a karmic imbalance that disrupts the natural order of the universe. This imbalance can manifest in a variety of ways, depending on the nature of the interference and the intentions behind it. One of the most immediate consequences is the creation of negative karma. As we discussed earlier, karma is the law of cause and effect and every action generates a corresponding reaction. When an awake soul violates the law of free will, they generate negative karma that will eventually return to them in some form. This karma may manifest in the form of challenges, obstacles, or suffering, either in this lifetime or in future lifetimes. But the consequences do not end there. The violation of the law of free will can also have a ripple effect, 
creating karmic repercussions for those who are affected by the interference. When an awake soul interferes with the free will of another, they disrupt the natural flow of that person's life, altering their course and potentially preventing them from learning the lessons they are meant to learn. This can create a karmic debt that must be repaid, either by the awake soul or by the individual who was affected. Furthermore, the violation of the law of free will can have consequences that extend beyond the individual level, affecting the larger spiritual community and even the cosmos itself. As we have discussed, awake souls have a responsibility to uphold the cosmic balance and to act in harmony with the spiritual laws that govern the universe. When they violate these laws, they create a disturbance that can have far-reaching consequences, not just for themselves but for the entire web of existence. Consider the story of a spiritual leader who, out of a desire to protect his followers, begins to control their actions, dictating their choices and interfering with their free will. At first, his actions may seem benevolent, as he seeks to guide his followers along the right path. But over time, the consequences of his interference become apparent. His followers, deprived of their free will, begin to lose their sense of agency and responsibility. They become dependent on the leader, unable to make decisions for themselves or to learn from their own experiences. As a result, the spiritual leader creates a karmic debt not just for himself, but for his followers as well. The leader's actions, though well-intentioned, have created a dependency that stifles the growth and evolution of his followers, preventing them from learning the lessons they need to learn. This karmic imbalance must be corrected, either in this lifetime or in future lifetimes, and the consequences may be far-reaching, affecting not just the individuals involved but the larger spiritual community as well. This story illustrates the profound consequences of violating the law of free will. When awake souls interfere with the free will of others, they create a karmic imbalance that disrupts the natural order of the universe and creates suffering for themselves and others. This is why it is so crucial for awake souls to honor and uphold the law of free will, to act with humility and compassion, and to resist the temptation to control or manipulate the lives of others. The Path of the Awake Soul So, how can awake souls navigate the challenges of their path without violating the law of free will? How can they use their spiritual power and wisdom in a way that honors the cosmic balance and supports the growth and evolution of all beings? The answer lies in the principles we have discussed, humility, compassion, and respect for free will, but it also requires a deeper understanding of the nature of spiritual power and the role of the awake soul in the greater cosmic plan. Spiritual power is not about control, it is about alignment. It is the ability to align oneself with the higher forces of the universe, to act in harmony with the divine will, and to channel that power in a way that serves the greater good. Awake souls are not meant to impose their will upon others or to control the course of events. Rather, they are meant to be conduits for the divine, channels through which the higher forces of love, wisdom, and compassion can flow into the world. To walk the path of the awake soul is to walk a path of service. It is to dedicate oneself to the upliftment of all beings, to the preservation of the cosmic balance, and to the fulfillment of the divine plan. This path requires great strength, great wisdom, and great humility. It requires the ability to see beyond the illusions of the ego and to act in accordance with the higher truth. It requires the ability to offer guidance and support without imposing one's will, to inspire and uplift without controlling or manipulating. Consider the story of a wise elder who is known for her deep spiritual insight and her ability to guide others on their spiritual journeys. People come to her from far and wide, seeking her wisdom and her guidance. The elder listens to their stories, understands their struggles, and offers her insight with great compassion. But she never tells them what to do. She never imposes her will or her opinions. Instead, she helps them to see the options before them, to understand the consequences of their choices, and to connect with their own inner wisdom. She guides them gently, helping them to find their own path, and to walk it with confidence and integrity. This is the path of the awake soul, to guide, to inspire, to uplift, but never to control. It is a path of service, of humility, and of deep respect for the free will of all beings. It is a path that honors the cosmic balance and supports the growth and evolution of all souls. And it is a path that requires constant vigilance, constant reflection, and constant alignment with the higher forces of the universe. In conclusion, the dark law that awake souls must not break is a law of profound significance. It is a law that preserves the integrity of each soul's journey, that honors the sanctity of free will, and that upholds the cosmic balance. It is a law that must be respected and upheld by all who walk the path of awakening, for the consequences of violating it are profound and far-reaching. But this law is not a burden, it is a gift. It is a reminder of the sacred responsibility that comes with spiritual power. 
and it is a guide that helps awake souls to navigate the challenges of their path with humility, compassion, and wisdom. By honoring this law, awake souls fulfill their true purpose, to be channels for the divine, to uplift and inspire all beings, and to contribute to the greater harmony and evolution of the cosmos. As you continue on your own spiritual journey, I encourage you to reflect on the principles we have discussed, the sanctity of free will, the importance of humility, the power of compassion, and the profound responsibility of the awake soul. Consider how you can apply these principles in your own life, how you can use your spiritual power and wisdom in a way that honors the cosmic balance and supports the growth and evolution of all beings. And remember, the path of the awake soul is not an easy one, but it is a path of great beauty, great meaning, and great fulfillment. It is a path that leads not just to personal enlightenment, but to the upliftment of all beings and the fulfillment of the divine plan. May you walk this path with grace, with wisdom, and with a deep respect for the sacred law that guides us all.